G'day, how you going? Ian Apples here, your acrylic guru from Australia. Welcome to my video. This is a live stream where I'm going to paint live a beach wave sand dune scene, okay? This canvas I'm using today is a 12 by 16 inch. I will put the size in the description below and I will put the colours that I use in there below as well after I'm filming. But there are links there. Check them out as well. And if it's your first time here, share, like and subscribe. Now I've got my water set up. I've got my canvas there. Uh, I'm going to bring you over here and I'll start setting up for this painting. All right. So let's get right into it. Okay, so I've got my craft white. I call it craft white, but it's a soft body titanium white and it's something I can spread around the canvas easier. And whenever I'm going to paint a sky with blending clouds or colours, I like to add some retarder in that. And I've got some brushes. I've got me putter on a brush and I've got a two inch and a one and a half inch blending brush. Now, if you want that set from me, message me on Facebook below and I'll send them out to you. 45 US dollars. And that's anywhere in the world. Now I'm going to just mix this retarder and the craft white so as I can get a primer on there ready to paint a realistic looking sky with lots of bullshit. All right, here we go. Oh, I said we're going to, <laughs> let's work out what we're going to do first. My goodness me. So I want to, uh, the wave, uh, where are we? I want the horizon line about here, about that height, okay, there pretty level and I want some sand dunes just coming windowing in and then coming up over the horizon line like that hope you can see these lines and this one here just sort of over there over there over there he's over there okay how's that going you can see that yes now in the water I want to have a wave so I'm going to bring a line let's say along here just a line reasonably in cahoots with the horizon line there's the horizon line so that's cahoots with it not down like that or like that and then the the height of the wave so i'm going to have this wave about that high okay that's the height of the wave and then you might have a bit of it coming down just simply like that boom a bit of a see that sort of a not quite an s bang like that and then here will be frothing agitated foam but we'll get to that later we're going to do the sky now like i said with the craft paint so i want to push this on to look at how much went on the brush i want to push this onto the sky area and pretty much jingle and jangle it down to the area where the water is going to be see like that boom push it into the tube of the canvas push it right in there get it right in there beautiful canvas cloth I'm using here today okay now I'm going to go to the tip of the brush and then stroke that like a pure gentleman all right look at this and I'm getting I don't know if you can see I'm getting a lot of the lumpity bumps out of there and ironing it down to a thin even wet sheet okay now I'm just going to wipe this brush and put my sky colors in there so let me wipe that All right, now down back to the palette here. I'll move the, those brushes out the way. Did I wipe that enough? Not enough. I just wiped it because I'm going to use the paint on the canvas mixed with that. So I've got some, I hope that's cerulean blue. No, it's cobalt blue. All right, too late. We're going to do a cobalt blue sky. Let's see how that one looks. Normally I use cerulean, but I'm not going to waste that cobalt. And I've got a bit of grey there as well, just mid-tone grey, a mid-tone grey. If you don't have the tubes of grey, just go and mix some up. Now we'll get this. See how blue that is? That is not a real blue for the sky. It's too loud. It's too cartoony. But that colour on the canvas there is going to dull it down, lighten it up, so to speak. And you can do it. Okay, let's try across here. I'm going to wear it away. There we go. Come all the way down to the bottom of that horizon line, just like that. Now, see over here, nothing quite got in the corners there. It didn't quite get the school on time. So you just simply crisscross that in. Okay, crisscross it wherever. And then back to your stroking it, lefts and rights. And we're getting that to be a decent light value for our sky. 
Now, if you want, you can add more white, but I'll leave that like that. I'm happy with it. I'm quite happy with that. I do prefer the cerulean blue, but not to worry, cobalt blue it is. Now, I'm going to get some grey down the bottom of our sky just to give it some atmosphere, okay? So pretty much come across there where you want it. All the way across, nothing too high up, and then just kind of wear that into your blue there. And this adds a real realistic value, and it also gives you that sphere type of shape, especially when you do the right shaped clouds as well. I'll show you how to do some clouds over your head. All right, do me free frame moments. All right, we got the grey in there. Now grab yourself some titanium white. Where are we? Get that out the way there, some titanium white. So there, and we're just gonna put some, two types of clouds in. Some to give this painting distance and depth right within it, and some to give it overheadness. I'll call it overheadness. All right, so simply, uh, I'll do the overheadness one first because my paintbrush is pulled up. So what I like to do is pretty much uh, a bit of a body, flip-flopping it around, but keeping, if anything, keeping a base. And I want to finger out and upwards like that. Pick up a bit more without contaminating the whole paint. Just like that. So see the sort of pattern I've put there? It's from there and it's coming over our head. Now when you blend that, I'll use the small blending brush. These brushes work great. Have yourself a kitchen towel or a cloth as well. Look at this brush, it's clean as buggery and I'm gonna make it quite dirty. So you get the base of these that are higher up, you get them quite flat like that. Look at this paint, it's nice and wet. Look what's on the brush already. That's what you've got to keep wiping off. Then you play, turmoil, tickle the tops lightly. Don't just sit there and go like this. You're going to ruin the cloud because the cloud is made up. Watch here. Watch what happens. Tickle the tops. You've got turmoil. I don't know if the camera's picking that up, but you can see. Get rid of that bit there see the brighter and duller values that's what's doing this turmoil does if you're just going to sit there and grind it and dust for fingerprints you're going to ruin that look so just learn and practice one method of clouds there's so many is out here on youtube teaching you how to paint clouds and whatever find one design you like whether it's me or somebody else and stick with it okay and then that'll can be your design of clouds. Now see how that's made a window there? That's quite cloudy, it's quite good, it's quite simple. You saw how easy that was. Put a bit of a base there and we'll blend this now. And I'll do bits of drags and movements in it. Now because it's acrylic, we're not gonna do what those oil artists do. We're not gonna go and sweep it like that. We'll leave it, that's done. Now we'll put the ones down here to make it look like it's far, far away, deep in the painting. All right, you want depth in your painting. Now, I've got the white again. Now, see this grey I put here? This is where you just want... I'll start from the highest one, so I'll probably have one about here. I like these lineal, a bit fattish like that. Let's say something like that. Boom, 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 boom. Bits of body. There's one there, and I might put one, I don't know, let's just say one on his own here. I want to... Try not to make any patterns, okay? Now I'm gonna grab that smaller blending brush again. Now with these um, clouds, I'll leave the tops, come from the middle and start dancing, turmoil, get all that, see that tail there? I'll give that a bit of a pull because they are what makes the distance and I'm pulling that down into that gray, okay? Down into that gray. All right. Now this next one, same thing. I won't give him a draggy tail because I don't want it to copy the other one too much. 
pull it down into that gray okay we've pulled that down into the gray okay looking okay so far grab your brush again in the titanium white Christy Burns, thank you very much. Cyber hugs and kisses to you, sweetheart. Thank you for your super chat donation. Much appreciated there, Christy Burns. Beautiful. Now, see these clouds I put on there? You want to put something, let's go here, in front. So I'm coming in front. See how I've got the bright and it's dulling down? Well, I want to keep that dulling down between that and the top of this next cloud. That's what creates the depth. This one's going to come all the way along. Getting him up there, getting him up there, and he's going to come along here like so. Maybe a bit more of a blob there, and I'll I'll stamp this one on as well. Just something along here in front of that one, right down on the horizon, and it can come off the painting like that if you want. Okay, so now we leave the top of that, and we're pulling this down to the horizon line. Pretty simple to do once you know how to do it. Pulling that along there. Oh, there we go. See how easy that was? We'll do this one over here. Get him danced in front of there. Two more. I'm pulling him down to the horizon line as well. Pull him down carefully, gingerly. Now, you can do this. Trust me, you can. It takes time. It takes practice. <coughs> Excuse me. Don't start painting and look at something like this and think, oh, well, I can't do it. You won't do it straight away. You've got to crawl before you walk. And then because of the height there, I might just put another one right out there in the distance and just bring the bottom of that one down, right down to the horizon. So I've got my brush on its edge now. And gingerly, carefully pulling him down like a true born artist. And there you go. You can give yourself a pat on the back. And that's created. Though to me, this, I might have overdone it, but for the tutorial's sake, those clouds there add distance. And this one here, so it looks like they're coming over your head. It's not like a flat curtain of clouds. You know what I mean? All right. I'll keep that brush down there. I'll put these in the water. Now this sky can be dry. Have I got an, oh yeah, I've got enough left. So I'll grab my puller out a knife. I call this a puller out a knife because it's like a spoon. And I can get in there. I can get right in there. And I'm going to grab some that this colour, we don't need that much. Good thing about tubs when you buy them, you can always put your paint back. But if you don't, this is quite a few years old, this tub, by the way. But sometimes if you don't put the lid on properly, they can dry up and go crusty. Now, uh, I've got the craft paint there, but that's full of retarder. I don't want that now. I just want normal craft paint because that'll help me blend the watercolours. So just enough to blend the water window in. So this is if you love painting the way, oh, I love the way Ian paints. This is what you do if you want to paint my way. I'm going to put a bit of mask and tape there. Now, someone said, how do I put masking tape on without it ripping up the paint? This is quite sticky. So I'll just shine you down here if I can. How's that look? I go against my material like that just to get a lot of the tackiness off. And then when I'm sticking it to the canvas, see where my thumbs are? Where's my waterline there? Where my thumbs are? There. Boom. Boom. That's it. Now I'll just gingerly, the bottom half of the tape, tap that in like that. That's it. The rest of this is still hovering there. I won't go and rub the living buggery out of that. You just leave it alone. You can, that's the ends. That's what you do. When I peel that off, that ain't going to rip nothing off. Now, I'm going to grab 
the craft paint on its own with no retarder just to prime in the water area okay well where are we I can actually do the whole bottom of the painting so I'll start from here this just helps the colors move across primes it up a bit this is not a gesso it's it's got um, a bit of a sheen to it getting all the way up there And now I'll push it to the tape. There we go. Push it to the tape. Oh, I've got a line there. Stroke it. And now I want to wipe this brush. I'll just wipe that. And I want to pick up and turquoise this is going to be remember I put those lines when I first started in the water I don't know if we can see them but I had one about here and one about there <coughs> there's our sand dune mark okay this is only going to be to about halfway if that I haven't got a lot on my brush because I don't want it big blobbing everywhere. So I'll get it on there away from the tape. And then I'll start bringing it to the tape. That way I don't hopefully get a ridge of paint right against my tape. And I'm going to bring that down. Let's get a bit more. Just to get it the yummy value we want. Nice ocean colour. Beautiful sunny day ocean colour. Okay, um, where are we? Where's my yeah, list? Oh. Now down here, I've got some cadmium yellow, medium to be exact. What I'm going to do is mix up that green colour you get. Uh, so I want to start mixing some of this into there with this brush. Okay, hopefully this is dark. And now we're going to come across here for that band. This is going to create the wave. You will see, said me. Get a bit, I'm just mixing up some more. I didn't quite mix enough up. Oh, yeah, there we go. Right across there. This is the thickness of the wave, which is there like that. Get it all the way across there. Boom. Just like that. Now the line where this is meeting there, I'm not going to go and blend that into there because it's going to have water cresping on the top. I need a bit more darkness right in here. There we go. And then I want, I'm going to have to get myself a flat brush. And some of this turquoise, I'll get some of the blue just to make it darker because out out there, out there on the water, we need a bit of this darker value out there. So get some of this and we can jingle and jangle a darker band right on the horizon line there like that. Stop. Stamp it on again because stamping it on sits it on there because this paint's wet. We're working wet on wet. I'll pull that a bit. I'm just controlling. Once I pull the tape off, you'll get a gist of what the guru is doing. Turn the brush around. Nothing too thick. Now, I'll gingerly paint it like an artist would there, like that. Here we go. Trying to get those lines lineal. Lineal as they are. Now be sure to check out the links below if you're not a patron and you want to see what I produce weeks before everyone else, you get those perks. If there's any patrons in the chat today, you can tell others what they're missing out on. Okay, and now this is just detail. You could put some, the odd 
dark band within the ocean there like that. Just something like that, sort of pull it through. Nothing too big. Maybe something over here. That's it, nothing too big. All right. Now I could, let me check the tape. Watch this tape come off. See, it's just sitting there. Now I was a little bit low. I want to grab the uh, the turquoise again, and just this this bit here. Just paint this in, just to there. Just blend it together. I know that my June's going to be there. Okay, get some of that there like that. See that white it's, that I painted on there? Doesn't matter if it's drying up, but it's letting all this slide across the canvas. Okay, now we've got to get uh, another flat brush, titanium white. So I'll grab the titanium white. Just chisel it onto your brush, like so. And um, where are we? Well, first, before I do that, sorry, sorry, I'll grab a brush. We want to get this darker. So let's grab that green and put a bit of yellow in. I mean, the, that blue in there. There we go. Get a bit of yellow. Let's just see if we can make a darker value. Something rich in there. That's dark, but very bright dark. I don't want it bright dark. I want it heavy dark. There we go. Let me have a look at that against there. Beautiful. Okay. So I've got an appropriate flat brush. Watch what we do here. I'm going to have my wave coming down there. So I pretty much want at the bottom of this jingle jangle in cahoots with the horizon line. Pick up a bit more. Keep your elbow out the paint, Ian. Coming all the way along here. Just go to that other blue colour. Not right into it. And we're going to slowly, I'll get the, up here, it's dark. And it's going to fade down. Dark. And it's fading down. This is fading up. Get a bit more darker here. Bring it down, just sort of like that. Stamp it on. Take your time, control what you're doing. And this, this colour here, the other colour, if we need to, we just go backwards and forwards with that. But we're getting this dark in before we put the white on so that it's going to make the depth and sense of our wave, okay? Just like that, and probably, because the actual middle part of that cylinder is not dark, the light's shining through that, okay, in my opinion. So we're getting all the top ridge and the bottom ridge dark. Now, I'm gonna grab that other brush that I had, and I wanna make that, first I'll make that S bit, coming down in front of there like that. Boom, just that simple. I might need a smaller one as well. I'm just using all flats here. I'll come across the top of that wave. So pretty much. Dance it on and get something wiggly wobbly across the top of that wave. Somewhere there, fading away out here. The sand dune's going to be there. You don't want it too factory neat, but <coughs> excuse me. Oh, I, left, I left that brush go into the yellow. I've got to learn to put my paints where I'm painting. I've got to reach all the way over sometimes. It's crazy what I do. Now, this is splashing all the way up, coming a bit up and over like that. Use good quality titanium white for this. Don't have it all watery. And I want some of it just showing some of that, because this is all 
splashed in turmoil. I want some of that green at the top of this showing through like that because it's a real whooshy wave. We're dancing it into that green, leaving that top half hard. And we'll, we, we will be building this white up. It's coming down here. That's where it's came down. So where it come down, I've got to come back and put a bit of dark in there to create the realism of it all. Okay, so we've got all turmoil here. This is like, you know, some people just do them like that. But I'm trying to make it just, well, wrong way. I'm trying to make it with strokes that you can do without having to pull the right scratchy mark in and just pull it off. That's going to be out there. So I'll and then having brighter and duller white bits helps as well. This is all still wet. Now see the foreground area? We're going to have little bits. Uh, let's start from here first. You just put it on lineal like this, wipe it, maybe use this brush or another one and get, I'm going to use another one because that one's too pointy. I love using this little little brush here. Just get some white on there and foam all this agitation up. Like I said, I've got to come back with some dark under that wave. So this is just foaming all this up in front of the wave. Pull it long, wipe the brush, get it all into there like that. And where the wave actually is, there's usually some white stuff there. I will use this brush to get some deliberate lines like this, just something I can scramble back. Just like that, wipe the scrambling brush and get all that pulled in lineal like. Lineal. We're going to have a sand dune hiding some of this, so don't worry. How's that looking in the monitor? Yeah, that's all right, I suppose. Now, grab yourself a liner brush, and the dark colour green that we had, what you need to do is sink this. It's important. Knowing where to put these shadow bits is the key to a great painting. All right. Uh, we're coming along, let's say, here. I want to get this darker. Stop. Reload the brush. I'm nervous. See how my hand's nervous, but it shakes it right into the right spot. Oh, big blob on there, don't that. Now, in the middle of that wave, I want to get a bit of light coming through as well. This dark colour we just put on, we're going to sink it back with a bit of white just in front of it. And keep this method for your waves and you won't go wrong. What are we going to do right there? Just a little bit of dark tunnelling up there. There we go. You know, you might have seen tutorials where they paint an eye in it and all that, but that's looking a bit too fairy tale wavy. I like to do a real look on my, to me this is quite a real looking one I suppose. I'm just going to wash my medium fan brush <clears throat> and I'm going to pick up Oh, before I do that, I'll move the camera so you can see this yellow and that colour green. We want a real yellowy colour, not too yellow, but just enough to make it look like lights coming through the thin part of the wave. Uh, so not too much, don't overkill it. Uh, I'll probably get some of this coming through there. Take your time and blend it through. You might have to come back with darker values just to iron it out if you need be. So we can, you can even do this, look, stamp it on and then just a bit at a time 
and then blend it through. Coming along, you're just adding different values within your wave. Can someone tell me how long this stream's been going for? I'll have a glance at the chats in a minute and see if I can see the time you wrote in there. Okay, does that... Yeah, you can see that. All right. Now, we need some more white. I'll give that a bit of a dry. I want to crisp up the um, the white. So I'm going to use, I don't know, I'll, I'll use an ang a bit of a smaller flat brush. Just picking up some pure titanium white. No water in it, nothing. You want this loud. And now the wave, now that I've dried it, it's going to have a lot more white within it. Condition your brush as you load it. This bit here is spraying just where it curled. We can fix that up where that's hitting the dark bit. I'll bring it from the, just little bits from the dark and up within the wave like that. This is gonna have all more, more on it. See, I'm just dilly-dallying around here. It's not that hard. You feel the vibe the more you do stuff like this. That's why I say practice. And all here, this is all pretty much white, bright white, washing up wave paint here, wave water, I mean. Now, see that dark bit I put there earlier, I said? You want to come in front of that and add the turmoil, leaving that dark bit there. Okay, just like that. It's all agitated like it's in a washing machine. And this is all in front of the wave there, agitating down into all this as well, ready to hit the shore. It's just a believable water scene for a beginner to achieve and pull off. Have a look if there's any bits you don't like. See what I'm doing now? I'm just sort of pulling them through and I might just detail some of this a bit more. Not that you need to, but you might have some splashes like spraying out just on that corner there, your way you get a, a bit of a spray if you want. Some dancing down there, but that's it. How's that looking in the camera? That's okay. And just bits along here periodically glance them up a bit like that you can if you want it's up to the individual how scary it is for you wet your brush grab some of the yellowy green that you put in here and mix that with white this is just i'm just going to do a little bit this wave doesn't warrant it i don't feel you might want to come from here and do these veins you know just very lightly very lightly yeah said the guru come across there very lightly uh, coming from here just coming up coming up there we go and then to finish this wave off we're just going to simply put a glare and that's something you can do. There we go. Let's leave that alone. We can do that to the cows come out. Okay. Clean my brush. And I want to get a glare. So I'm going to pick up the white, the titanium white. How's that look? Yeah, that's okay. Picking up the titanium white on its own, okay, on that little brush that I had. Let's hope it's not too wet. And I want to get just some kind of... glare in here not too much if you feel oh I'll, I'll ruin my painting if I put that glare in mine Ian don't do it just do what your journey is allowing you to do within your art because some of this has glare within it straight across there the lights shining across it and maybe a bit in here that's it, that's just adding detail. 
that's it. Leave it alone, Ian. You're going to get carried away with the darn thing. All right. I'm just going to use simple yellow ochre. And I want to get this craft paint on its own. And I want to mix that with the amount of yellow ochre that I need. I'm just going to come... There, I'm, we'll get a bit of a bit behind, and then this one's coming up as well. Oh, I want it to come higher than the water, actually. So where are we? I want it to come up higher than the water. Big close sand dunes. So that's what we're going to block in. Yes, yeah, so I'm going to dry this sand dune so that we can put another coat over it. Now I'm going to put just some more white because I want this a lot more glarier. The sun's up in the sky. We need glare. I want a glare out there, if you know what I mean. All right, let's get up here. This is just white now, I'm trying to tint it with some white. I don't want to darken it anymore. It's dark enough. There we go. That has put a bit of a path and distance down there, if you can see what I mean. That yellow ochre, I'm grabbing some of the blue just to darken it up. So, which is the cobalt blue that I use within the painting. And I want to make the shadow of what I'm going to put on the dunes there. Just some June grass, if you know what I mean. It's kind of made a dark green, but hopefully it'll make a shadow. So I want to come and get some stuff here, there. And I want to come pretty much here and just get some, this is the darkness of it all. I'm keeping it lineal, up and down, sort of like if I'm painting pine trees, but this is going to be highlighted. It's just going to be sand dune grass. We want some air in between it. We want some sand dune windows, meaning you want to see the sand dunes between it a lot here and there, coming down here, and it's mainly at the top, picking up some more. Try not to make it too solid and blobby. It's just grass. But this darkness you need to, because it's only a light colour grass, but without this dark colour there, it's probably going to look a bit floaty. Put a little bit here as well, just to sink that wave back. Where are we? I thought they had to move the camera. Just something there. That'll do. Back over here. It's coming off the painting there. Some here. And then I'll quickly highlight this. Those of you who are new to my channel, you might notice I use the word quickly a lot. I tell you, don't rush it. I consciously say or subconsciously say that because in my mind, I'm always wanting to hurry things up so I can get it filmed. Uh, that's why I'm just saying, well, I'll just quickly do this, but it doesn't mean you've got to be quick with your work, okay? Uh, maybe a little bit down here, just lingering. There we go. Now give that a bit of a dry. I'm just going to see, let's say this bit here that I put on, pull some of it down. like that, just to sit it onto the ground, a bit of a shadow, just making its own little shadow there, that's way in the foreground there, yeah I like that, that's looking a bit better isn't it, when you pull it down, giving it its little shadows, 
There we go, join that back up. Now we've just got to highlight that, okay? It's kind of sand, Junie. You can go on with that until the cows come home. Now, that colour that I made, I will try and just add the cadmium yellow into that just to see what vibe we're getting. And that's not too bad because we're going for a green, but we need those browns within the green. And that cadmium, not the cadmium, that yellow ochre has added some of the browns within there, I hope. Let me just see. Yes, that's fine. So now we need the appropriate brush. I'll try this one, but I don't think it's the one I need. <coughs> Excuse me, I'll edit that cough out. Okay, so we're trying to get some real grassy bits of June grass here, you know, within all this depth and sit it on top of all the depth what i'll grab is i'll grab a wider flat brush that one's a bit of a swollen flat brush it's it's swollen if you know what i mean so i'll just grab the a more sharper one and a little bit bigger in length so as i can get some of these in front of the water there careful when you're touching your painting and hopefully i'm going to mix up some more now It's sitting all that back. On top of the sand dune and that dark is what's sitting it down. Now, I'm just going to mint this colour up a bit. Uh, what do you mean, Ian? What do you mean? All right, what I mean is a bit of white. Hopefully. I just want to test a bit first. Yeah, a bit of white into that colour. Chisel it up, chisel it up. And now we're going to gingerly dry it if you must. Mainly the tops of all that grass. But leave that green colour you put on previously. Don't stamp all that away for goodness sakes. This is just artistically, look at that, highlighting a lot of this grass. If you have a better way to do beach grass, by all means do it. Uh, I can only show you what I know how to do. And there we go. Bits in there. Okay, just thumping up some of this wave, thumping it, I'll call it thumping it because it's boom, boom, boom. There we go. That's a bit more, now that's a reasonable kind of a wave. I want to just do something here if I can just to see what's going to happen. Maybe I shouldn't have done that. I'm just going to have a quick look. I can rub that back out with a darker colour if I don't like it. <laughs> yeah, what I can do if I'm clever, I can scallop some rays in that bit there just to blend it up into the wave there like that. Now what I'm going to do is grab my script liner and I want to autograph this. Yeah, I'll just find a dark colour. Something that's going to work. And then we'll whack a frame on it. Oh, you got your 720 out, Christine Smith. Good on you. Yeah, watch me. Videos on your large screen TV. It's wickedly wicked. Now, I'll autograph this. And like I say, check out the links in the description below. Share, like, and subscribe if it's your first time here. Message me on Facebook if you want to purchase the brushes or even this painting. Uh, all the links are below my Facebook page there. You message me there. If you want to become a patron and see what perks they get, the patron link's there. Become a patron also. And I'm doing some little shorts you might have noticed on my YouTube channel. 
I'm going to address that in Friday Night Live. But they're just little 30 second to minute videos just to up my view rate. And it's all about me or Steve the Cat because Steve the Cat hasn't appeared in many videos lately. It's a way to incorporate him back into the channel. All right, we'll whack a frame on this and see how she looks. Get rid of her on there. Now, it should look all right in a frame. <clears throat> oh, oh, look at that. That's not too shabby, is it? You just got to – Jill and Jane and Bob are going down to the beach. Uh, they're going to go and lay on the sand and look at the water, maybe go in there. But we've got a wave, a simple wave. Follow those principles. Now, this ain't the best wave, but you know what I mean. You know what the guru is trying to get through to you. You get a sky gun that's looking overhead, okay? You can probably put some – no, but it's a sunny day anyway. So that's something you can achieve with a bit of practice, and I know you can do it. All right, that was a lot of fun. I hope you enjoyed that and you learned something from this video. And be sure to tell your friends if you like what I'm doing. But if you don't like what I'm doing, you tell everybody. Goodbye, good luck, and good on you.